Hello everyone, today I wanted to make a video showing you guys how to make CSGO cheats in Python. Um, this CS, these CSGO cheats include um, auto-updating offsets, glow, and radar hacks. So let's go ahead and start with the auto-updating offsets. So if you're not familiar with Haze Dumper, Haze Dumper is an offset dumper for CSGO. So every time CSGO has a new update, these offsets change. So whenever there's a new update, you can come to this repository and it's going to have the latest version. So if we actually go to csgo.json and then if you click this raw button, this contains all of the raw JSON data for all the offsets and this URL never changes. So what we can do is, is on startup for the cheat, it can fetch this JSON right here and no matter what, it's going to be pretty much the latest version. So to do this, we want to import requests. Once we imported requests, we can use this command here to actually fetch the latest offsets. We're then going to wrap it in a try and accept clause to make sure that we're able to parse the output successfully. We're then going to import pymem. Then we can use the following command to actually open the CSGO process in pymem. After that, we can load client.dll by using pymem.process module from name and then we're gonna, we're gonna pass it the CSGO process handle and then the DLL name we want. And then we're gonna do this dot LP base of DLL, which is actually gonna grab the module base address. Then we're gonna add another if statement here just to verify that we're actually able to fetch client.dll. Now we can actually start working on the entity class. I created this init method that accepts the memory address of the entity. We can then use pymem to read the memory address of the latest health offset. So to explain this a bit, we, we can see we use this self.address, which we're going to pass into the C entity. Then we're going to go into Haze Dumper. We're going to go to the netvar section and look for the MI health variable. So if we go back here, um, you can go to netvars and then I think it's somewhere up here. I'm actually just going to search for it. I health. Yeah, right here. So it's going to find this offset right here. So in this case, it's 256. And it's going to read that integer and it's going to return it. So with this function now made, we can make another one called is alive. And this is just going to check to see if the current entity is alive. Here's another function here that checks to see if the player is dormant. So if the player is dormant, it either means they're AFK or they're too far away to render. So CSGO doesn't render all the entities at once. It only renders the, the entities in your view distance in a certain distance essentially so this is essentially saying if the player is afk or the player is too far away return true this function is used to fetch the team number so um, a two corresponds to terrorist and a three um, responds to counter terrorist and you can see just like all the other ones we're using csgo and then we're going to use read integer because we're looking for the int value and then we're going to use the address of the entity and then we're going to pass the offset of the team number. This function is used to write to the is spotted variable. So when this value is written to true, they um, they appear on your radar. So you get that red circle on your radar showing that those um, entities are there. And lastly, for right now, there's this is diffusing function. So what this is doing is it's checking to see if the current entity is diffusing. Just like before, reading a Boolean using the entity address and then the offset um, is diffusing, which if we go back up here, can be found here you know, under the netbar section. So now we're going to make a local player class that inherits this C entity. So it's going to inherit all of these functions that we wrote up here and including this update function. So we don't need to pass an address to local player because in CSGO, there's this own um, variable here that we can call and read and say, hey, what is the address of the local player? So we don't need to, we don't need to loop through anything. We can just say, hey, give me the local player address. So now let's start working on our main function here. We're gonna define a local player and we're gonna pass um, the address of none because we can use update to actually populate the address field. We're then going to do a while true loop. So after this, we're pretty much going to be looping through the entities. So we want to continue doing this. We're actually going to go up here now and we're going to import uh, win32 API. After we import win32 API, we can put this statement here to essentially break out of the loop if F6 is pressed. So if F6 is pressed, then hey, break out of the loop and stop the cheat. 
Then we're going to scroll up and import time. We're then going to add this while loop that checks to see if the local player address is valid. And then if it's not, it's going to update it. And then it's going to sleep for a second and a half. Now we're going to start looping through the entities. So if the local player isn't alive, we're just going to break out of the loop. Otherwise, we're going to fetch the current entity. So to explain this a bit, we're going to read the integer or kind of like the D word address. We're going to use client.dll plus the signatures um, entity list. So we're going to go, we're going to get the entity list. And then this is going to be our player ID. And then it, each player has a buffer of 10 bytes. So we're going to loop through each player. Then, then if the entity is invalid, we're just going to continue and go to the next one. Otherwise, we're going to define him as a C entity. Now, if that player is either not alive or if the player is AFK or too far away, we're just going to move on to the next one. Now we're going to go back up to our C entity class and we're going to write a glow method. So it has this value of R, which is the red value, G, the green value, and then B, the blue value, and then also the alpha. So how um, see-through you want it to be. So down here is this glow manager. And the glow manager is actually used to glow the entities. You use the glow manager and then you take the entity's glow index and you take them and you add them together. And then you write um, the RGB colors to it. So at offset um, eight, we're writing R, offset C, we're writing G, and then offset 10, we're writing B. And then here's the alpha. And then this um, offset right here is actually to enable the glow. So once we define that, method up there we're actually going to check to see if the local player is on the same team as the entity we're looping through if the entity is on the same team as us i want them to be blue if they're diffusing i want them to glow purple and then we're actually going to go up and define another method to this c entity class and that's going to be glow by health this method is used to glow the entity depending on how much health they have so if they're under 30 health, they're going to glow red. Under 50 health, they're going to glow yellow. And then otherwise, they're going to be green. Then we're going to go else, see entity glow by health. So if they're our teammate, we're going to glow them blue. If they're diffusing, glow purple. Otherwise, um, glow them by their health. So assuming they're an enemy. And then we're going to do C entity dot spot. And this is going to actually spot them on the radar. I want to go back real quick and add this continue statement here because we don't need to spot our teammates on the radar. Then we're gonna sleep for 0.5 seconds. The reason we're doing this um, is if we don't do this, our CPU will just get destroyed. You might notice a slight flicker. So if you want, you can start decreasing the sleep value and you'll see less of a flicker. But honestly, the 0.05 um, looks fine to me. And then finally, we can add this statement here, which just checks to see if we're running this file directly. And then if we are, it's going to call main, which is going to start our CSGO cheats. So let's go ahead and start Counter-Strike and give this a try. Once you're in the game, you want to open a terminal and then run um, cheats.py. Go back in the game, you can see we have enemies glowing now as long as our teammates. Thank you. 